welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Terry Morrow, and I'm here with Catherine Haleko. Say hi, Catherine. Hi, Terry. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Catherine and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week, we'll be continuing with our discussion of the West Wing and Sports Night, but first... Dancing with the Stars, the finals. It is over for another season, and it ended pretty much the way we've thought it would end since very, very, very early. Since about day one. Yes, right? which would be anticlimactic, except that it was very satisfying and that they were three very enjoyable dancers at the end, all of whom I would have been happy to win. So yes. it, that that is a very, very nice way to go out, not to be, you know, crossing your fingers that somebody loses. That was, well, actually, that was the first night when I was saying, please let Janet be fourth. Please let (laughs) Calvin get third. So, and that resulted in satisfactorily. I'm I'm a little concerned, though, still for poor Gleb. Did he really have to be in a shower today on stage? I couldn't believe they did that. And shower then again. they all fly to New York. I can't remember if just the final three or I think all four fly. Are they, they said, really going to put that man on a plane? He's going to collapse at some point. He he was putting on a game face, but he did not look well to me tonight either. No. So, boy. I know. Poor Gleb. Pros have been dropping like flies this season. It's been a rough, uh, the, 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 I don't know, did any... I don't think there were any serious injuries amongst the contestants. No, there was that thing where Jana had like all that oh, athletic right. tape all over her yes. and her ribs were hurt or something. That's right. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, Sharna had her knee injury yeah. and Gleb was sick. And I feel like there was somebody else I at some feel point like that was. was. Yeah, it was a rough season. But uh, <laughs> it's always so fun on the, on the actual. The, the, the show that we wa- watched on Tuesday, the, the second night of the finals, where they mm-hmm. bring everybody back and you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, right. Jake T. This. Austin was on this show. <laughs> and, and continuing with his theme of he lost a bet to get into this thing. He was on for like about five he seconds was tonight. For two and seconds. then he was gone. <laughs> it's like, right. I'll show up as per my contract, but I'm not going to dance. I'm not going to do anything. Right. But Rick Perry, on the other yes. hand, he's in there DJing for Vanilla Ice and playing the drums. And <laughs> and Ryan also seemed to pop up a few places and seemed to be having a really good time. Yes. That's what so, you want to see. Yeah. And Mary Lou was dancing without Derek mm-hmm. when I think she and Tara were doing a dance. And Sasha was mm-hmm. there, but Derek was not. I don't and, know. But they, they didn't really... Um, they were careful not to draw attention to that. They were. I think earlier I saw he was there, but then I didn't see him the rest of the night. So, oh, interesting. <laughs> yes. So, how did you feel about the freestyles? Specifically, what did you think of James and Sharna's freestyle? I didn't love it, and yeah, it, this was the one with the library shelves and all that stuff. Yeah, that was the that right? was the the um that was the first one. That was the redemption oh no, that one. was. And that was okay. Oh. The freestyle was the let us interpret your life threatening oh, right, right, moments right. of near death yeah. in dance. Which with with voiceover describing <laughs> your situation. Right. Uh, you know? Right. Interesting idea. Yeah. Well yeah. executed. I appreciated that it wasn't really out and out contemporary, that there were a lot of different obvious dance styles in there, but I guess it was, you want to have some variety and you want to do something in spur- I thought it would have been terrific for the, my most memorable week or day, what well, was my most memorable year where yes. they're going over that and they did right. all that stuff about it. That's where I would have liked to have seen that mm-hmm. dance. But like Calvin and Lori yeah. both did these joyful, fun, delightful dances. And then his was, let's go over one more time how I almost died. And it was like, right. Eh, didn't really Mm -hmm. capture the mood of the night to me right I really really enjoyed Calvin and Lindsay's um both of their dances on Monday night um just really showcased the fun and the you know high energy just everything that made us really 
fall in love with Calvin all right. season right. Um, was what they focused on. And yeah. I thought that was great. Yeah, definitely focused on his strengths. And uh, mm-hmm. I enjoyed watching, you know, watching the four couples. It's like, I know which three I would like to see another dance from. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. they were the three who went on. Mm-hmm. So the freestyle, I know, she really we got really... left behind. We really got, we really got lucky. <laughs> we did. We <laughs> this did. time with all of our three favorites. Yeah. That were our favorites from the very beginning. They were. I think we um, predicted it all along. Went all the way through. Yeah. That was very satisfying. <laughs> uh-huh. And everybody else was just going to go home in some sort of order. But those, were, I would have liked, my only regret is I would have liked Tara to have made it to the final four instead of Jana. Right. But... Yeah, that would have been nice. Yeah, but as it was fine. I did, I will admit to fast forwarding through Jana's song that she sang. <laughs> not me. It was only listening. enjoyable because they showed scenes of the others dancing. I liked right. it for that. Which I caught glimpses of because I was fast forwarding. <laughs> as you fast forwarded. Did you fast forward no. through all the judges' comments? Most of them, yeah. yes. Well, for the the last three where it was 10, 10, 10, 10, Exactly. 10, 10, it was like 10, nobody's 10. getting any scoring tonight. Um, no. Because America has already voted and it would be seen as trying to jimmy the results. So right. they got to just give everybody 10s. I was really, you know, I it's it seemed since the beginning that it was Lori's to lose and everybody's mm-hmm. always assumed, well, she's going to get it, but I do kind of wish this other person would get it. But like last night, everywhere I looked, people were talking about mostly about voting for James and some about to, voting for Calvin. I, other than me, I didn't see anybody talking about voting for Lori. So I was thinking, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe she's not going to get it, but she did. Yeah, I, I split my vote. I, well, I gave since I had five votes online at least, and yes. so I did two, two, and one, figuring, ah. okay, Lori gets. A lot, you know, yeah. she, she maybe doesn't need mine, but that's, that's how people lose. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. It is. That's what I've been thinking. But, mm-hmm. uh, I voted, see, I voted online on Facebook and on the ABC site and I used oh, three phones in my house. <laughs> so you are somebody dedicated. was voting for her, uh, <laughs> but most people I read all said, you know, I would be happy for any of them to win. This is my personal favorite. Right. A lot of people would have liked to have seen Sharna get it because she's yes. never got it before. And that I would have been happy to see. Mm-hmm. I think she deserves it. I think both Sharna and Lindsay did an incredible job choreographing for those guys. They really did. You know, even more than Val, who had, you know, a much better dancer to work with. And, and the dances were fine. But... To take right, two guys the, who were not creativity. dancers and really play mm-hmm. to their strengths so very nicely. Right. Yeah, they, they deserve a lot of credit for that, yeah, I think. They really do. I kind of wish they had waited to announce that Lori was going to go on the tour until she actually won. Because I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, see, that proves it was preordained. <laughs> they jimmied everything so that she would win because she's going on the tour. Yeah. But. Yeah, but um, other people go on the tour that don't. That's true. So. Yes. I her. reject that. I know, it, was, it was a pretty enjoyable uh, season, I think. Nothing, yes, I nothing think too so, bad. too. Any, any unpleasantness has been long forgotten, although they had to show <laughs> the stupid uh, protesters again. <laughs> I know. That was silly. <laughs> I That just, the more I think about that, the more I think that was staged. And some producers No, slipped. really? I don't know. It just seems so Planet Mirror Bowl version of a protest. <laughs> I mean, a bunch of people in t-shirts come in and make a minimum amount of fuss just so the security guard can tackle somebody and then they file out Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. are never really much heard from again. It just seems like, you know, the producers went to a nearby park with a stack of 50s and said, hey, (laughs) here's some t-shirts. You didn't hear it from me. Go on in there and make some trouble. But it might be interesting. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know, but it launched things off on an interesting note. And, uh, certainly um, did. (laughs) Anyway, so another season down. Yes. That was a lot of fun. I agree. That was a good, I mean, especially from at the beginning of the season when we're looking at the cast going, where did they dig up these people? (laughs) As as is pretty much what we say every time, but. uh, Right. 
Right. And then so many of them turned out to be quite entertaining they to did. watch. They did. So. There was a large percentage of people who kind of knew why they were there. Although seeing Maureen again, I was thinking, oh, that's right. She was pretty unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary Lou was pretty unhappy. And so there was and a Judy. little bit. I've completely forgotten Babyface was ever Wasn't on it. this the season that Marla Maples was on too? No, or was that, that was, a year? Uh, that was in the that spring? That was last they all blend together, Must don't have... they? No, she wasn't on this one. She was on the one that Geraldo was on. So that was last season. In the spring. In the yeah. spring, yes. But uh, I hope one side effect of this season is that Sasha will now be a pro regularly. Because he did so well with Tara. He really yes. did. He needs to yeah, be he's... the pro for all the short female contestants. <laughs> Exactly. And they need to get yeah, a real a tall girl for when they ever have somebody Calvin's height again. <laughs> when they, they did that, the, the, the number where all the men were in it were doing that dance and then James yeah. was with them and Calvin was with them. And Calvin was like kind of scrouching down so he didn't want yeah, to cause... tower above them all. Yes. <laughs> I will miss that. Anything else you want to say about this season or these last two uh, nights? No, I I enjoyed. I agree with you. I enjoyed this season. There was so many good. There was a lot of good dancing, and there were some surprise people that we enjoyed a lot. Mm-hmm. And we we kind of figured we'd like Lori, and <laughs> yes, and we did. Now the so, thing yeah. that I will be looking two things I will look, be looking ahead to with interest. Um, one of them will be if there turns out to actually have been a romance between James and Sharna, because boy, oh boy, were they looking like, do you know how many times they showed his girlfriend in the audience at the end <laughs> when they yeah, did their last dance? But they were like boy, flipping to her every two minutes. Yeah. And when she, you know, when they were having their last rehearsal and I was like, oh my gosh, get a room, you guys. Like, I know. Ooh. They were really pushing them. They've faked that before. They did a sort of a fake showmance with Meryl and Max that right. it was so obviously not real. But she was playing along with it. It was like she said, uh, you know, okay, I got a script. I can do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Sharna and James seems a lot more genuine. So I think think Blondie must have said, you will show me in the audience <laughs> frequently so they remember. <laughs> no, no, no. This is all show business. Right. <laughs> Yikes. So I will be looking to see if, if in the future it turns out something happens yes, there. Yes, we'll be paying attention. Yes. And see. also, <laughs> the talk coming out of the Olympics was going to be that Simone Biles was going to do Dancing with the Stars. And oh. then Lori kind of, she was going to do it after their tour is over. And then Lori kind of snuck in and did this one and won. Mm. So can they have another... It now makes it awkward if they have another person from that gymnastics team come on because for the two of them to yeah. win two seasons in a row looks pretty bad, but you don't want to come on to the show with no shot of winning, especially if you are the gold medalist and the star of that team. So it'll be interesting yeah, to they, see. I think that would be really weird if they had <laughs> another one too. of those. I mean, there's only five of them like to have one. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if, she, if Lori had come on and done sort of pleasantly midfield, that would have been one thing. But she was the prohibitive favorite from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then she won, and now she's going on tour. So I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Allie Raisman was already on a few seasons ago and didn't do that great. Um, oh, she was on. I didn't yeah. even know that. Yeah, in between Olympics <laughs> she was in. And... Okay. um but I don't see how they can have somebody next season. It's just so that yeah. will be interesting to see what happens with that. If they just say, oh, well, uh-huh. no, she's she has other commitments. Um, right. We'll see when it comes along for our next group of uh, semi uh-huh. people we haven't heard of. It'll but, be sooner than we think, right? <laughs> yes. Nicole can be proud of her countryman. He did very, very That's well. right. He did a very nice job. <laughs> yes. And my even my husband, who just usually wanders through the room and sneers when he sees the dancing, <laughs> saw James and Charna dancing and said, hey, he's pretty good. He must have had some prior training. And I said, no, I really don't think so. So he was yeah, impressed. Yeah, especially since he was like in traction <laughs> yes. a year ago or however A long miracle, I understand. <laughs> did and you there hear were, that There were like... Dancers in white clothes on one side and dancers in black clothes on the other side. And at the end, he embraced the light. And well, actually, usually when you embrace the light, that means that you die. So maybe not. So symbolic. So (laughs) symbolic. So very, so you think you can dance. 
Mm-hmm. But, well, yes. moving on from that now, Dancing with Another the Stars is not ending. the only thing we are celebrating the ending of. It is the most sequiny thing we are celebrating the ending of. But we are also <laughs> coming in this episode, coincidentally, to the end of our sports night watch That's with right. the episodes Bells and a Siren, La Forza del Destino, and Quo Vadimus. I would say mm-hmm. Quo Vadimus. Dana said Quo Vadimus which I don't think yeah. is the proper pronunciation. But let me ask you, because now as I was watching this, I was remembering that this is what the end game was. Mm-hmm. Did you know, number one, early on, that obviously Clark Gregg had to be this Calvin Traeger who was the mystery guy? Mm-hmm. And number two, did you immediately realize that Quokvatimus means where are we going? When he says, tell I your didn't... team, where are we going? And then you right. hear the name of this company is Quo Vadimus. Did you make that connection right away? Or did you make it when Dana made it? I made it when Dana made it, which I I should be ashamed of myself as a <laughs> as a scholar of romance language. <laughs> I don't actually know Latin, but I know French, Spanish, and a little Italian. So I should have been able to figure that out. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it was clear to me that he, when he was in the bar. Yeah all those times I'm uh-huh. like well obviously this is the guy who's yeah when you're meeting this mystery guy and then they mention hey there's this guy who owns this company who's all these mm-hmm. things and it's like gee have we seen a guy right law of economy of characters if somebody mm-hmm. comes along, it's got to be somebody you've seen before so that seems right. really obvious I can't remember if I figured out the where are we going thing or not before day I remember did. being <laughs> thrilled by it but I can't remember if it's because I figured it out myself or at the same time the light bulb goes off over Dana's head mm-hmm. I do remember that line anyone who can't make money from sports night should get out of the money-making business which I think is was intended to a be dig both at the, the show within the show <laughs> and the show itself a dig. Right. Yes. Although I tried to look up and find out if the show had been canceled before its last episode and I couldn't figure that out, but they did say that they did have an opportunity to continue it on like HBO or some other place. Even back then, they that was a thing that you could do, but they decided to just focus mm-hmm. all their attention on West Wing, which was probably wise. Probably a good idea. Yeah, it's yeah. doing two shows. Because because the second season of Sports Night overlapped with the first season of West Wing. I keep forgetting right. that and thinking that what we're watching now on West Wing was happening at the same time as what we're watching now on Sports Night. But no, there's a season's difference between them. So I one season right. of doing double duty, I guess they must have said, you know what, <laughs> let's just put this one That was bed. hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's so it, it it ends at a good point. Everybody is relatively, um, uh, apparently Natalie yeah. and Jeremy are back together and possibly Rebecca and Dan will get back together. I remember being very worried about the fact that he tore up her phone number and how he's ever going to find it. So <laughs> hopefully he tore it up and put it in his pocket and not dumped it in the trash with all the coffee grounds. Right. <laughs> or perhaps she would go ahead and come back. Seems like she might. Yes. Yes. So yeah. it leaves things at a relatively encouraging point, I guess. Yeah, it does. I was very glad that um, Dana did not kiss the guy from Quo Vadimus because yes. I was afraid that that was going to happen. Like when she was started yelling about my show is on my yeah. show is on and she was perilously close to his face <laughs> and, and i was not going to approve of that no, if it happened. that would not have been right nor did she kiss casey when he suggested that this was the time desperate times when people started right. sleeping together she right. just let that pass yes so good for her. we can imagine them all still making their little show and living happily ever after mm-hmm And Natalie and Jeremy breaking up and getting back together many, (laughs) many times. (laughs) Exactly. And various attractive professional women throwing themselves at Dan and Casey on a regular (laughs) basis. Yes. And allowing them to not take no for an answer. A regular and annoying basis. (laughs) It's Sorkin's little fantasy world. You gotta yes. let them have it. Well, you gotta buy into it if you're. You do. Gonna watch. You really do. You really do. You have to suspend disbelief. I guess mm-hmm. would be the thing. Um, so, anything else about these episodes or about this? What are you glad you spent these however many weeks binging on this show? Yes, yes, I am. I'm, I'm glad. I feel like it's a cultural thing. That I'm glad I 
yeah finally got around to experiencing 15 <laughs> years later yeah um, and it does have the virtue of being short so you can yes you can watch the whole thing in a relatively compact period of time mm-hmm yeah, and it was pretty funny in um, Bells and a Siren, especially um, all of the references to the internet. <laughs> and, you know, like, wait, there's another computer over there that has the same thing on it. <laughs> and Casey's watching it because he really thinks Bells and a Siren will go off whenever <laughs> some news comes in. And Which, in I fact, they do, though, coincidentally. Right, coincidentally. <laughs> So that was good. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. And it's it's going to be interesting to see now as we go on with West Wing, some of these same actors popping in. Mm -hmm. Clark Gregg is going to recur as a FBI agent. I think he's coming up. I think his first episode is somebody's going to emergency, somebody's going to jail, which is coming up in a few weeks. Okay. And then he comes back various times. And I think Felicity Huffman's going to be on an episode in a few coming along in a few here mm -hmm. um different people wind and of course joshua molina he starts i think it's like the end of season three beginning of season four it's whenever rob Lowe left okay but anyway yes mm -hmm. he he does come and he is a regular and and certainly as we've noted already certain lines recur certain plots mm -hmm. recur certain little figments of sorkin's wishful imagination recur <laughs> um so it will be fun having this base of knowledge as we go forward. So yes. you can say, hey, it's that guy, or hey, it's that line, or mm -hmm. hey, it's that plot twist as we go right. along. So that is it for our Sports Night Marathon. And uh, I enjoyed watching it again, too. It's been a while since I went through it. I really should have mm -hmm. watched all the, since I do have the DVDs, I should have listened to all the commentaries and had interesting things to say. But I'm all streaming now, baby. That's it. <laughs> not dealing with any of that uh never again discs with the DVDs. Or tapes or machines of anything i'm watching on my phone that's <laughs> that's the uh cultural thing we do now in 2016 that's right we we catch wi-fi wherever we are <laughs> yes absolutely well, we are still not anywhere even remotely close to the end of our West Wing Marathon. We're going to be doing that sucker for quite some time. That's there right. are a lot of seasons. There may be some I will just allow you to watch and talk about. And I'll go, oh, yeah, I remember mm -hmm. that one. Some I may not want to watch again. <laughs> But right. many, many good ones I would. So mm -hmm. this season particularly has a high proportion of good ones, including I think the one we watched for this week, Galileo, yeah. uh, was very enjoyable. Although I wrote down in my notes exactly the same thing that they then mentioned on the West Wing Weekly podcast was that people were snotty in this one. There was a large degree of snottiness. That mm -hmm. was possibly not necessary. People being snotty to CJ, the, I mean... Uh, Sam just being really unnecessarily nasty to the NASA PR guy. Okay, yes. so maybe his speech wasn't good, but saying we're both writers, if you expand that to people who can spell, that's just yeah, that, mean. That wasn't not, not nice. particularly Sam like either, I don't think. Mm -hmm, Toby, no. yes. I could see Toby having that. that. I think that Rob Lowe accidentally got Richard Schiff's script or something because <laughs> that did not seem right. And and no. Bartlett also was being snotty and superior. And it's just not the best behavior for our uh -huh. band of idealistic public servants. And I felt a little bad about that watching it this time. But mm -hmm. in general, I think it's it's a fun episode. Yes. Yeah, and I I did enjoy how CJ got the triumph at the end yes, of coming up with the broader nice. theme. Yes. The broader theme nice. that the president was looking for, she figured out what it was. It has yes. to come in the same episode where she yells out in front of a group of people that she's good in bed, which, <laughs> again, one of those things no human woman would actually do, I don't think. Uh -huh. A Sorkinian woman. Yes. Well, and then bring it up again. Yeah, and bringing it up at the end in the Oval Office. I just, that is not my favorite CJ moment. Neither of those is. No. But I do not blame her for them. I blame the writers. Right. But, and uh, Mallory came back. Did we care that Mallory came back? Not really. <laughs> I didn't. I <laughs> didn't. <know. laughs> I like Allison Smith. I'm happy to see her working, but. 
I agree with what they were saying on the West Wing Weekly podcast in that that relationship never really worked. And so revisiting it is not that interesting. Right. And that they there already is a dating the boss's daughter exactly. relationship in Charlie and Zoe, yes. although we haven't seen Zoe in a while. We have not. That has been pretty backburnered. But mm-hmm. yeah, a much more effective one. So why exactly? I guess just just we like that sparring. Mm-hmm. Supposedly. I don't personally, but theoretically. We well, like and it. it's in those those discussions that you often get the impassioned speeches, you know, in defense in this case of the space program um, before it was all about education policy and funding. And it gives, it gives Sorkin a chance to give Sam a speech about something. It does. It's sad that he needs (laughs) her to spur him to speechify since that is, you know, his job and he could be just writing something and reading out loud to see how it sounds, but that's okay. (laughs) That's okay. We'll give it to him. Right. Well, on the podcast, I enjoyed how they brought on um, a scientist from NASA. Yes, from the that was fun. Jet Propulsion Laboratory to talk about um, very specifically, I think her job was, what was it, like entry and landing or some, you know, she had this yeah. great long title. <laughs> <laughs> and she even said how she got to make up her own title. <laughs> yes. Yes, that was fun. That was interesting. They always get good guests. Mallory. (laughs) That's right. That was appropriate. So now next week, the West Wing Weekly is not going to have an episode, which I guess next week, by which I mean this week. So Mm -hmm. we will, for our podcast next week, I think we're going to have to take a week off. Okay. Or else we will be before them, which is too bad because the next episode is Noel and it is spectacular. Mm -hmm. But wait for it, I guess. (laughs) Well, you could watch it a couple of times in that amount That's of time, true. as you may okay. wish to. But we'll um, yes, I well, I'm interested to see who they will have on a, as a guest for this one. There's mm-hmm. a, I think they've already had Bradley Whitford on, right? Didn't he? Wasn't yes, they he did. Yes, because he it's mm-hmm. his episode. It's a right. very very Josh heavy episode. But Adam Markin is on it as a guest star. I would be amused to hear Oh, him. he's funny. He is. He's very good. He's very, very good in the episode. And he's his character does, I think, recur one more time. So they could have him on to talk about playing this part. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that they will. Anyway, so I will be sad not to be have an excuse to watch that right away, but maybe I will watch it a couple of times because it's right. very good. And so next week on this podcast, we will not have any dancing to talk about. We will not have any sports night to talk about. And we now realize we will not have any West Wing <laughs> to talk about. So you have a book. I do <laughs> You've have read a book. A book. <laughs> I did. I'm reading a book. And by next week, I will be finished with it. Well, it now is you called... better. Yep. Well, I have to finish it for book club, and now I have to finish it for the podcast, so I have yes. double incentive. It is called The Little Paris Bookshop okay. by Nina George. So All right. Sounds good. We'll be, And then maybe we will talk about some of our options for TV shows yes. to watch next. Yes. We will find other things to talk about, you can be sure, to draw out this time that we have together. <laughs> <laughs> for... Plenty of faffing about. Right? Yes, we we shall we shall come up with all manner of faffing about <laughs> to amuse you. We hope. Uh, yes. But for now, that is going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes, including our daily speed rounds and weekly group chats. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at ParentingRoundabout.com. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, Terry. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.